Today we will be going over the richest people who live in each of the 50 states of America. Since I don't want this video to last forever, I'll break it up in two different parts to see how much interest there is. Now you might be thinking that all of these people just inherited their wealth, and for some of them that might be true. But a research study done on a large group of millionaires by financial expert Chris Hogan found that only 21% of millionaires inherited their wealth, while the other 79% were self-made. Being financially disciplined and consistently looking for new opportunities is what builds wealth. Anyone who says otherwise is just making excuses for shortcomings. When I start going through these people and their stories, listen to how many of them came from nothing, had hard childhoods, started their own businesses, sometimes had to go against what their own family told them to do. Try to see if you can connect to any of this, to your own goals and aspirations. We're going to start off in the great state of Georgia, where Jim Kennedy has a net worth of $9.2 billion. He is the grandson of the original owner of Cox Enterprises, which is an automotive, communications, and media company. You may have heard of their services Auto Trader and Kelly Blue Book before. I'm sure I have a ton of subscribers from Wyoming. Maybe one of them is John Mars, who has a net worth of $28.1 billion. John and his siblings inherited the gigantic company that is Mars from their father. Mars, of course, makes candies like Snickers and M&Ms. If you try finding pics of this guy online, there's only two. The super old pic of him and one with the Queen of England. I guess he couldn't afford a camera. Plenty of pictures of Mars candy, though. The smallest state in the nation is where our first self-made billionaire hails from. Jonathan Nelson who founded Providence Equity Partners in 1989. It has assets in more than 180 companies, ranging from media to education, and also includes Hulu and Iron Man triathlons. The next state is Oregon, which I hope I'm pronouncing right. I heard you're not supposed to have it rhyme with hexagon, so it's not Oregon. Someone must have told Phil Knight to just do it when he was a young athlete running track at the University of Oregon. Maybe it was his track coach, who he later started a sports apparel company called Nike with. Knight led the company for 52 years as Nike reached the feet of billions worldwide. We move off to the desert of Arizona, where Ernest Garcia II made it rich selling cars in a vending machine via Carvana. The online used car retailer has allowed the once found guilty of bank fraud Garcia to become a billionaire. I'm sure he's not the only one on this list that's committed a crime, he's just the only one that's got caught. The richest person in Connecticut is someone I've actually already made a video about before. Ray Dalio learned about stock trading while he was working as a caddy in his teenage years. His firm, Bridgewater Associates, was one of the best performing hedge funds since the last recession. Moving over to the Midwest, in Bloomington, Indiana, Cook started a medical device company that boomed into a billion dollar company. Except that was Carl Cook's parents who started that company. He took over as the CEO after his father's death and is now worth billions. Now, that's a lot of old men who became billionaires by inheriting money. Let's talk about some women who became billionaires by inheriting a lot of money. Like Tamara Gustafsson, who is the daughter of the owner of Public Storage. She has served as the board of director of her family's company since 2008. This one might break your heart, but the richest person in Louisiana is Gail Benson, who became both owner of the New Orleans Pelicans and Saints after her husband, Tom Benson's death in 2018. Tom became rich selling used cars and eventually bought banks. His life sadly ended with him writing his daughter and grandchildren out of his will via email and leaving all of his money to his new wife, Gail, just a few years before he passed away. Now this is someone who actually got a huge assist from their wife. In Maryland, Ted Lerner is the owner of the Washington Nationals. He got his big break when his wife lent him $250 in 1952 to start his own real estate company. Lerner Enterprises today 
is the largest private landlord company in the Washington, D.C. area. This just goes to show how much inflation has happened in the last three quarters of a century. That $250 was enough to start a real estate business. $250 today maybe gets you maybe one brick. These videos take a ton of time to put together. The best way you can show your support to this channel is to leave a like, comment what you think of these videos, all these ways to get rich, and subscribe to the channel so I can keep making videos for you guys. The richest man in Nevada, Sheldon Edelson, must have known the house always wins. Before starting his casino empire, Edelson borrowed money as a teenager to start various selling gigs in the vending machine business, selling newspapers, and toiletry kits, which eventually made him a millionaire. Today he is the CEO of Las Vegas Sands, a gaming and entertainment company with resorts that has various locations around the world. Fun fact about our next state, New Jersey, it is the only state where all of its counties are classified as metropolitan areas. Probably won't be passing along too much farmland in New Jersey. At just 49, John Overdeck is one of the youngest billionaires on this list. He was once a VP at Amazon in his 20s. Later, he went on to start the hedge fund that is Two Sigma. No, this isn't the dad from That 70s Show, but it sure does look like him. Glenn Taylor started a printing and electronics company while attending Harvard Business School. He later served in the House of Representatives during the 80s before buying the basketball teams from Minnesota in both the NBA and WNBA, as well as the Iowa Wolves of the developmental G League. Heading down south, Jimmy Rain appears as a cowboy in his company's commercials. Rain has made close to a billion dollars selling lumber, which was actually a side gig he worked while serving as a county judge. Eventually, he turned the lumber company into a full-time job. I'm sure $900 million probably pays better than a government job. In Ohio, Les Wexner used to work at his father's clothing store as a child. When he felt he couldn't get his parents to listen to the changes he wanted to make to the business, he went out and started his own clothing store. Wexner built a retail conglomerate that today is L Brands, which also owns Victoria's Secret, Bath & Body Works, among others. You probably thought the best way to become rich was to start an oil or a real estate company. It's actually to get rich off of Twix and Snickers bars. This is the second person on this list who was an heir to the original founder of the candy company, Mars. And sneak peek might not be the last. Heading over to South Dakota, this is the only state to not share a single letter with its capital city. But that didn't stop Thomas Denny Sanford, who lost both of his parents at a young age and spent time in juvie as a child. He later started First Premier Bank and made a fortune offering starter credit cards to those with bad credit history. Though Bernie Sanders is a rich man, he isn't the richest person in Vermont. That would be John Abel, who used to work at a medical company after college. He later left to form his own medical equipment manufacturing company called Boston Scientific, which had $9 billion in revenue in 2017. Let's head over to the largest city in the United States, where the former mayor of New York City, Michael Bloomberg, is the richest New Yorker. Although I'm sure the male salary pays a lot, he has racked up most of his fortune as the founder of Bloomberg, a global financial services and mass media company. Bloomberg has spent time as a Democrat, Republican, Independent, and as of today is back to being a Democrat. Wow. That's a lot of going back and forth. Heading over to Missouri, you will find the 16th richest woman in the U.S. She is the great-granddaughter of William W. Cargill. The company bearing her great-grandfather's last name is the largest private company in the United States. Cargill, among other things, distributes grain and other agricultural commodities. Moving over to Michigan, I could talk all about Dan Gilbert and the rise of his company Quicken Loans. 
but I think most people know him for owning an NBA team, the Cleveland Cavaliers, where he publicly penned a letter in Cosmic Sands personally attacking the best basketball player of this past generation, LeBron James, for leaving his team in 2010. What makes it even funnier is in the le letter, Gilbert says that the Cavaliers will win a championship before LeBron, who after this made the NBA Finals for four straight years after leaving Gilbert. The Cavs, meanwhile, pick number one in the draft almost every year after having the worst record in the league while LeBron came back to Cleveland in 2014. I'm sure that reunion was quite awkward with Gilbert. I have a feeling you might like this one. In Oklahoma, Harold Hamm, he was the 13th child in his family. He used to pick cotton barefoot as a child and worked at as a gas station as a teenager to help support his family. He started a truck company to transfer water to the oil fields before taking out a loan to drill his first field. His company, Continental Resources, is one of the biggest independent oil companies today. A true rag to riches tale right here. Now you might think that Matt Chase started J.P. Morgan Chase and that's how he got wealthy. Or you can use some common sense and realize that that was some guy named J.P. Morgan. Mac started the oil industry at just age 14, before he joined the army. He worked in the oil wells till starting his own business in 1968, and today is known as the oil and natural gas tycoon of the New Mexico fields in his home state. Heading to North Dakota, we find Gary Thartleson, who was once a teacher in his younger days before starting a hospitality company that builds and operates hotels across the United States. He is the first ever billionaire in the history of North Dakota. That's going to be it for part one. Let me know if you'd like to see the other 25 states. Although we had a lot of people inherit their wealth here, know that this is only the top of the pinnacle, who have benefited from numerous years of compounding interest of their descendants to grow their fortune. After these standouts are plenty of hardworking people who embrace the American dream and work hard every day to accomplish their goals.